In this episode, we're talking all about color, more specifically, what the difference between grading and correction is, how you can color grade your footage using a metric color, how to grade using adjustment layers, and how to export your own .cube LUT from Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. Color correction and color grading are two terms that are often thrown around and are thought to be the same thing, but they're actually different. They're different parts of the same process. So essentially color correction is your first stage of color. Color correction is the point where you're correcting all of the colors and matching the white balance and the exposure levels of all of the clips. Once all of your clips on your timeline are matched in terms of white balance and exposure, you can now move on to the grading process. And the grading process is basically just enhancing the colors and adding style into your edit. So color correction is just fixing the footage, making sure everything looks consistent and then grading is adding that style. When people use the terms correction or grading, they're typically referring to the latter stage, the grading stage. It's the stage where you're adding all of that color and all of that style into the footage. So with that being said, let's move into Premiere and begin correcting and grading our footage. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and I've got two video clips on my timeline. So this first clip looks great. It's exposed correctly. The white balance is set to 5,500 Kelvins, which is correct for this scene. But the second clip filmed on the same day at the same time is filmed in the wrong white balance and it's completely underexposed. So we need to go ahead and correct this clip to match this clip before we can move on into grading. So to do that, we're just going to select this layer here. We'll go into effects and we'll search for curves. Drop RGB curves onto your footage. And then inside of the RGB curves plugin, you can see we've got the master, the red, the green, and the blue channels all represented with these lines. So the curves here represent the values of each specific channel in your video. So the value at the top right is your highlights, the bottom left is your shadows, and the middle are your midtones. So essentially, if we pull this top point over here to the left, we're going to increase the exposure in the highlights. If we pull this over to the right, we're going to decrease the values of the shadows and therefore crushing the shadows. And then if we go into the middle, the midtones are going to be brightened if we pull to the left, and they're going to be darkened if we pull them towards the right. And the same thing applies for each individual channel. So you could adjust each individual channel individually. So let's just look at that first clip before we make any adjustments. So this first clip looks great, but when we go over to the second clip, it looks quite underexposed and quite blue. So let's fix the color first. So I'm just going to go over to the green and the blue channel, and I'm just going to decrease the amount of green and blue from this shot. So I'm just going to pull this down. So I'm pulling the green down. I'm going to pull the blue down a little bit as well, but not much. So somewhere around there. So it's looking a bit better. We'll pull the green out again just a bit more. We'll compare that to the first shot and you'll see we're getting there. But the problem is now it is still wildly underexposed. So we're just going to increase the exposure. So we'll increase the highlights. We'll increase the shadows a touch. And then we can either crush the shadows a bit or we can increase those as well. I'm going to increase them a touch and let's compare. Starting to get there. That's looking a lot better. Of course, though, if we're looking here at the building in the background, as you can see, these buildings are quite a natural color. Yet when we go over here, they're still quite blue. So I'm just going to decrease those midtones again on the green and the blue. There you go. And now I'm just going to move over into the shadows. I'm just going to pull the shadows down on the blue and the same thing on the green. We'll pull the shadows down and that's starting to look a lot better. Of course, feel free to keep adjusting this and make sure that this looks right because you want this to match this first clip. So let's just turn off the curves for now. Let's see how we're progressing. So this is where we started and this is where we are now. So as you can see, it looks a lot closer to that first clip. So once you're happy with that, that is the color correction now complete. Once all of the clips are matching, we can now move on to grading. And for grading, we're going to go into Lemetri color. So we're going to select our first clip. We'll go up to this top bar here and we'll select the color workspace. If for some reason though that's not working, then you can always just go into effects, search for Lemetri. And that should be Lemetri color under color correction. And you can just drop that onto your clip and access all of your settings from over here on the left. But I'm going to go into the color space. 
And as you can see, the color correction in Lumetri Color is organized by basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary and vignette. So I'm just going to first expand this area just so we get a better understanding and a better view of our video. Then we're going to go into basic correction. Now in basic correction, you can use one of Adobe's input LUTs. So you can input the Alexa V3 LUT, for example, and that's going to add a splash of color onto your video. And that's a good starting point. Now here you can go ahead and adjust the temperature or the tint. So with the temperature, you can either cool that down or you can warm it up. I'm just going to cool it down a touch. There you go, like so. And I'm going to lean the tint in towards the purples a little bit because my camera leans towards the greens. Then I'm just going to pull the exposure down a touch, increase the contrast, pull the highlights down because we're starting to clip up here a little bit. So I'll pull those down, increase the shadows a bit, increase the white, and then I'm just going to pull the blacks down a bit as well. And then we can always increase the saturation. The problem is though with saturation though is it looks a little bit ugly and I'd rather not adjust the saturation. I'd rather adjust the vibrance in the next section. So I'm going to pull the saturation back down to 100 and we'll move on to creative. Now creative, you've got a look and this is basically a LUT. So essentially a LUT or a lookup table is just a color preset that you can apply to your footage to give you an instant splash of character onto your footage. And you can just select any one of these specific looks or LUTs for you. And these are all provided by Adobe. Now, some of these look great. Some of them, not so much. Of course, if you find something that you do like the look of, so this looks kind of interesting. If you like the look of that, you can either tone this down using intensity or you can make that really intense. Obviously, that looks really ugly. So we'll tone this down a little bit. But if you're not a fan of any of those LUTs, then of course you can just go into browse and you can go ahead and import your LUTs that you may have downloaded from the internet or elsewhere. Of course, though, you don't have to have a LUT. It's completely up to you. So we'll move on. And we've got faded film. So faded film is just going to boost those shadows a bit and pull the highlights down. As you can see, just flattening everything. You've got sharpen and that's just going to make your image sharper. But the problem is the more you sharpen this, the more it starts to look like video rather than film. So I like to keep that at zero. And then we've got the vibrant. So I prefer the look of vibrant over saturation. It just makes everything look a bit more natural. So this is the vibrance. I'll pull that back down and do the saturation. So this is how saturation looks maxed out. And then if you compare that with vibrance maxed out, vibrance just feels a little bit more natural. But even that's a bit too much. So I'm just going to pull that down. And then we've got shadow tint and highlight tint. So we can add some color into the shadows. So let's add, let's add a blue into the shadows and we'll add an orange into the highlights. At the moment, that looks horrendous. So I'm just going to get rid of that. But of course, if you wanted to add a shadow tint or a highlight tint, then that is how you would do that. And of course, you can always balance that tint using this slider. Now, moving down, we've got the curves and we've kind of spoke about curves already, but this is just doing the same thing. You can adjust the whites, the RGB, the red, the green or the blue channels. Then you've got hue slash saturation curves, which is here. So you can increase or decrease the saturation in specific channels. So let's pull the blue up and the green down. So as you can see, the green over there is going to go or I'll do the opposite way around. We'll increase the green and we'll remove the blue. So as you can see, the blue is desaturated, but the greens and the colors around the greens are fairly saturated. But we'll get rid of that for now. Next, we've got hue slash hue. So this is just another way of just adjusting the colors. So we can take the greens and we can lean them up towards pinks. And as you can see, all of those green tones are now leaning towards pink. Then we've got hue versus luma. So let's grab the green pull the green up and that's just going to make the greens a lot brighter and a lot more overexposed. So we'll keep that where it was. Then of course, we've got Luma versus saturation, saturation versus saturation, and feel free to have a play with those. Now we've got color wheels and match. So kind of like what we had before with the shadow tint and the highlight tint, we can also adjust the shadows, midtones and highlights here. So you can lean the shadows in towards blue, the midtones towards orange, highlights towards orange, and you can create a look. That is ugly though, so I'm just going to ignore all of that and move down into HSL secondary. Now the HSL secondary tab is a really powerful way of color grading specific parts of your video. So let's target this pink in the foreground. 
So we're going to go to a purple to begin with. And then we're just going to drag this slider across until we target the tree. So as you can see, the color is starting to creep in there. So basically anything that is gray won't be affected. Anything that is in color will be affected. So select that. Then you can move down and you've got denoise blur. You've got correction so you can lean this towards a specific color. So if I push this towards the yellows, then those turn yellow. If I push this towards blue, they become a bluish purple. It's completely up to you. But if that's not working for you, you can always adjust the temperature. You can adjust the tint if you like. You can add the contrast, take the contrast away, sharpening, saturation again. So you could desaturate a specific color, which looks quite cool. So essentially that's turned that pink into white. And that does look really cool. The HSL secondary tab is actually a really powerful way of color grading because you're able to manipulate individual colors. And if you've selected the correct color, then it won't affect anything else in your image. That means you can really craft the look of your video and really grade this to a really stylistic point. And then moving on, we've got vignettes. So if we pull this to the left, we're going to create a dark black vignette. And if you pull this to the right, it's going to create a white vignette. Midpoint just changes the midpoint of that vignette. Roundness just makes it more round. And then feather, we know what feathering is. If you have it over to the left, there's no feathering. If you pull it over to the right, it's nice and soft. But once you're happy with all of that, you can now move on to the next clip and you can begin grading this specific clip. Or alternatively, if you just go over to the left, so go to this layer, we'll copy that Lemetri color. So we'll go Command C. We'll move over and then we'll go Command V. And as you can see, that has pasted that onto that specific clip. The thing is though, it's all well and good copying and pasting the Lemetri color onto your clips if you've only got a few specific clips on your timeline. But if you're editing a music video or a documentary, for example, and there's almost a hundred clips on your timeline, then pasting everything could take some time. So rather than doing that, what I would rather do is just copy that specific effect. We'll delete it from the original clip. Then we're just going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer. So we'll go to new item, adjustment layer, press OK. Then we'll drag the adjustment layer up onto video layer two. And then make sure that this sits on top of everything that you want affected and just paste that effect onto the adjustment layer. So with that color grading now applied to the adjustment layer, it means any clips that you drop underneath that adjustment layer now will also be affected. So let's just drop a random clip onto the timeline. We'll pull the scale down. And as you can see, this has now been affected with that adjustment layer. So that looks really awesome. Of course, because this grading is on an adjustment layer as well, it means we can pull down the opacity of the effect. And that means if it looks a little bit harsh at 100%, you can pull this down and just dial that look in to be exactly where you want it to be. Now, once you've graded that and you've created a specific look for your videos, if you wanted to use this look on a different project, then all you have to do is just export that LUT from Premiere. So in order to do that, you just go over to the Lemetri color window on the right. Again, if you want to access this, then just press the color tab up here. Then you just want to double click or right click on Lemetri color and select export.cube. That is going to load up the finder and all you have to do is just rename this. So let's go for grade. And then we'll put this on the hard drive. We'll save that. And now let's just delete all of the Lemetri effects that we have. So let's just delete that there. We'll delete the adjustment layer. So you can see we're starting fresh again. Now all you have to do to grade this in the future is you go to basic correction, input LUT. You're going to browse. You're going to find that .cube file that you just exported and press open. And there you go. That look, that specific color grade is now sitting on your footage. And of course, you can just add that onto your adjustment layer of every project that you want to use that effect on. And of course, that is just going to affect your videos moving forward. When it comes to video editing, people are often always thinking about what's the best transition to use or how can I create a really cinematic look? And people always overlook color correction and color grading. 
So it's really important that you spend the time in Premiere experimenting with all of these different settings to try and figure out what looks good and what doesn't look good. I would personally recommend studying music videos and films and try and find a specific look that you like the look of and try and recreate that look inside of Adobe Premiere Pro with some of your own footage. Color correction and color grading like any other skill on the planet just gets better and easier with time. The more you practice and the more effort that you put into it, the better and the easier it's going to get over time. So just take the time to figure out all of the controls, figure out what everything does in the Lumetri color tab. And I promise you over time, your color grading is going to get really nice and really stylistic. But there you go. That is the color correction and the color grading episode now complete. In the next episode, I'm talking all about exporting. More precisely, how to batch export, how to export specific parts of your video, how to export for YouTube, and how to export videos with a transparent background.